This lot just can't seem to get ahead in Hunter's WWE. Some have experienced incredible highs before slinking back into the shadows, but most fans would agree they've hardly been used well consistently. Time to play the game? Nah, -uh, time to take the blame. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 WWE stars Triple H will never use properly. Number 10, Hit Row's remaining members. Note the wording there. Remaining members suggest that Hit Row still has a future post top dollar release, the much maligned faction surely doesn't. And it's not like anyone will shed a tear if it vanishes anyway. Hit Row's comeback was retrospectively one of Triple H's worst decisions back in 2022. 2023 wasn't kind to the group either, but what's next? B-Fab has been hanging around with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, so perhaps you'll get some mileage out of that alliance in the short term. Then there's poor Ashanti Theodonis. He's gone AWOL from screens, and will probably require a complete repackage job if he's gonna survive. Maybe these guys are just doomed. Nobody wants to hear that because it sounds so negative, obviously, but it could be true. Triple H might have put a red pen through B-Fab and Adonis heading into 2024. So either they get used to WWE catering or they possibly try their luck elsewhere. Number nine, Cameron Grimes. This is such a curious one. Cameron Grimes was a hot commodity on the NXT roster. He crafted a memorable, likable character that successfully turned him from middle of the pack heel into surprise breakout babyface. And everyone had high hopes for the man once he landed on the main roster. Grimes' run on SmackDown has been the pits thus far. Creative outright failed to present him properly from the off. His startup mini feud opposite Baron Corbin went nowhere. Baron headed back to NXT without settling his differences with Cam. Then Grimes entered a dreaded chapter in any developmental call-ups career. Borderline enhancement talent work. Yeah, that's what Cameron has been doing on and off recently on Friday night, and it sucks to see. He's far too talented for this crud man. And with all this in mind, I've got a question for you. Who has been your favourite NXT call-up of all time? It's probably not Grimes, but you let me know who is in the comments section down below. Number 8, Apollo Crews. Arguably, this isn't just a Triple H issue, it's a wider WWE issue. But Hunter is currently the head of creative, so he's gonna take the hit. Apollo Crews once threatened to break out when the promotion cast him as a descendant of Nigerian royalty. He was in the Intercontinental title hunt back then. Those days feel like ancient history now. Today, Apollo has returned to playing the same generic smiley babyface role that bored people to tears when he first landed on the main roster. Remember Michael Cole desperately reaching by using words like dynamic, exciting, and energetic to describe Cruz? That was in lieu of any actual personality, and it did not work. Apollo is living some sort of WWE-style Groundhog Day in terms of characterization, and that ain't gonna change in 2024. Triple H isn't gonna suddenly wake up one day and think, hey, I need to book Apollo Cruz as a top guy, is he? Number 7, Dexter Loomis. Trips just doesn't really get the Dexter Loomis gimmick, does he? If he did, then Dex would have had a better shot at success on Raw beyond his rivalry versus The Miz. That was a bit of an unsatisfying mid-card experience, and it failed to elevate Loomis in the slightest. So yeah, maybe Hunter just can't get on board with what Dexter is all about. And that's fair enough, really. But it doesn't really bode well for the spooky ex-NXT star. Put simply, Loomis would need to seemingly radically alter his character to have a hope in hell of thriving under the game in 2024. Number 6, Ricochet. At time of recording, High Flyer Ricochet has worked nine bouts on WWE television since losing to Logan Paul back at SummerSlam in August. Can you name any of them? The point is that Ol Rico hasn't been up to much since ending his beef with LP. There was zero follow-up from Triple H and his creative staff for Ricochet. His on-screen character didn't continue to develop, and he's only worked a few fun in the moment but ultimately forgettable matches versus guys like like Shinsuke Nakamura since. It's a real shame considering how well Rico was doing over the summer, because it looked like his stop-start pushes under McMahon were a thing of the past. Nope, he's still on that not-so-merry-go-round. Oh yeah, just a quick one to say thank you for hopping on this video right today. And if you like what you see, then go and tap on that subscribe button down below. Number 5, The Viking Raiders. Raid, 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 raid! That chant should be beaming throughout arenas as people toast yet another fabulous Viking Raiders tag efforts, but it's simply a fantasy. Yes, injuries have robbed the Raiders of some time in 2023, but they weren't exactly smashing it on TV anyway. Or more accurately, they weren't being allowed to smash it. The duo had a proud reputation pre-WWE. War Machine earned rave reviews pretty much everywhere on the pro wrestling map, and they seemed destined to become a surefire hit after putting pen to paper on contracts with the biggest promotion in the land. Too much treading water has led to creative rot setting in, though. It's almost impossible to picture anything better 
better for Eric, Ivar and Valhalla once they're all back together on telly again. And Triple H will probably lead the charge for everyone to focus on others. What a damn shame. Number 4, Charlotte Flair. You might be hearing this entry and thinking, uh, Charlotte Flair is constantly in the title mix, she is definitely used properly. Wrestlers can be pushed hard and used wrongly at the same time. And most would agree that Charlotte's incredibly forced babyface run was visible evidence of that. She's way better as a heel, that's just the way it is. Interviews away from the ring reveal that Flair is a nice enough person, but her painted on face, smile and love me, love me approach is pretty difficult to swallow on television. It's too put on. But Triple H has still persevered with Charlotte's face run throughout his tenure in charge of creative. This guy is beginning to wonder if he'll ever return Flair to the glory days of Heeldom. You never know, maybe the Queen will get another shot at walking on the dark side once she returns from her terrible knee injury. Get well soon, Charlotte. Number 3, Karrion Cross. The 8th of December 2023 episode of SmackDown marked Karrion Cross's first televised match on the Blue Brand since August. It was teased as a return to form for he and Scarlett, something Karrion put over on social media, but he wound up losing to Bobby Lashley without putting up enough of a fight. The sad truth is that Karrion's second WWE run has been a continuation of where he left off during the first. His NXT stuff wasn't for everyone, but it was a million miles better than anything he's done on the main roster. Right now, Cross is one rung above enhancement worker. Triple H has had over a full year to get it right with Karrion. Cross is worse off than he was when he bounced back into view as an antagonist for top names like Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. Number 2, Omos. Vince McMahon surely grinned from ear to ear when he first clapped eyes on the towering Omos. A physically impressive monster like that was always McMahon's thing. But Triple H, as aforementioned, will have his own likes and dislikes when it comes to booking. And maybe Omos isn't his kind of worker. It did certainly explain why the giant went from being pushed like an unstoppable force, then dropping off the face of the earth suddenly. WWE has barely used Omos at all since WrestleMania 39. And that could be a hunter call. Squash match pushes will only take someone so far. So Trips might well be bored of the Omos experiment, and see WWE's previous obsession with giants as just another trope that must be binned in the modern era. And number one, Shayna Baszler. One, Shayna Baszler would be forgiven for throwing up her hands, sighing, and realizing the WWE push she richly deserves will never ever come. Things look like they might be headed in the right direction when Baszler aligned with Ronda Rousey, but that was another false dawn for her. Now Rousey is gone, and Shayna is right back where she started before that tag run. Triple H will try again with Shayna in 2024, but unfortunately things will go the way they always go. WWE will give her a few weeks, maybe a month tops to rack up some wins, then they'll lose interest and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Rinse and frustrating repeat. Poor Shayna. Did you like this WWE stars Triple H will never use properly video? Then why not check out this 9 wrestlers WWE will sign in 2024 video too? It's a blast. Bye bye.